Leonardo Energy es una iniciativa que aglutina un amplio colectivo de profesionales en el área de la energía sostenible. Este documental presenta los aspectos tecnológicos de la energía fotovoltaica de concentración. ¿La tecnología de concentración usa las mismas células que la fotovoltaica plana? The CPV can use also silicon cells as flat PV, but they have said that you can use small cells, so you can use very efficient cells, so it's better to use more efficient cells. Normally the CPV use uh, arseniurogallion uh, cells, it's also called 3-5 cells, that, that is called so because we use the elements of the table, uh, chemical elements for the group 3 and 5. But the better advantage is to use multi-junction cells, because the multi-junction cells of these three, five uh, type of cells, we can provide better the, the spectrum. Each part of the cell, if we use, for, exa for example, three junctions, each part of the cell can use a very a different part of the spectrum, so we can profit better the solar spectrum, and we can use better the solar radiation. Typically, for example, the efficiencies, the silicon cells have 27%. Uh, the record efficiency in a 3-5 in a cell is 40.7, it's really much more. Um, typically, commercially, the, the cell silicon cell have at maximum 25%, and in a 3-5 cell can use 38% of the efficiency. And typically, in the flat panel, we use silicon cell with 80%, and in the CPV, 38%, so almost double of the efficiency. ¿Significa esto que el rendimiento de la central alcanza el 38%? No, unfortunately not, because we have after the cell of the efficiency of the cell we have the optical efficiency. And the optical efficiency can be between 85% and 95%. And after we have the efficiency of the system because we have the alignment of the cells into the system or the alignment of the modules into the tracker. So at the end we are going to have between 18 and 25%. Uh, in of the efficiency of the system in the CPV um, between 11 and 13 in the flat PV. So we have higher efficiency than the flat PV, but we can, we can still improve very much. ¿Cuáles son las distintas tecnologías empleadas en la concentración fotovoltaica? Oh, there are a lot of uh, types of concentrators with different technologies. So we can have, for example, depending on the tracker system, we can have one axis tracker. In this case, we can have only low concentration. So first, the concentration can be low, so between 2 and 10, for example, to between 2 and 40 better. Medium concentration between 40 and 300, and high concentration between 300 and 1000 or 2000. Depending on the tracking system, we can have one axis tracker, uh, and we can have, in this case, only low concentration, or we can use uh, two axis tracker. In this case, we can use as much concentration as we want. It depends also of the technology. We, we can have, for example, linear uh, concentrators. In this case, we, it's only low concentration, like the parabolic system. Or we can have parabolic system with independent cells, like uh, solar system uh, that is done in, in Australia. In this case, the, the cells are separate and they use a, a cooling system. Or we can use compact system, like isophoton or concentric or solar focus and we have passive heatsink, we don't use cooling system. It depends on the optics also, we have different types of optics. We can have reflectors or lens or uh, total reflection system. Uh, depending on this type of system, we can have also low concentration, medium concentration or high concentration. We have here two examples of uh, CPV technology. This one is a refractive system. They use a Fresnel lens and behind the cell, the small cell, they have a very small cell of one millimeter square. Here we have another example, it's a reflection system. They have here a reflector, the direct solar radiation comes here and reflect to this mirror, and the mirror reflect again inside the cell. They use here a one um, cell of one centimeter square. They are the typical system that we can use in the CPV technology, refractive and reflexive system. En resumen, la fotovoltaica de concentración presenta numerosas ventajas. La mayor parte de sus aplicaciones no necesita agua de refrigeración, lo cual es un factor clave en climas soleados y secos. Además, es menos sensible que la fotovoltaica plana a las temperaturas elevadas. 
es una tecnología modular, lo cual permite inversiones modestas en un comienzo y ampliaciones de potencia más tarde si es necesario. Contrariamente a las instalaciones solares termoeléctricas, para cuya rentabilidad un tamaño mínimo de 50 a 100 megavatios es necesario, la fotovoltaica de concentración presenta un interés económico desde las primeras decenas de kilovatios. Finalmente, el tiempo de desarrollo y ejecución del proyecto es menor que en otras tecnologías. Se están resolviendo algunas dificultades como la precisión y rigidez del sistema de seguimiento o la intermitencia de la producción eléctrica en función de las nubes. Los sistemas fotovoltaicos de concentración actuales alcanzan un rendimiento del 25% a comparar con el 14% para la fotovoltaica plana. El objetivo es alcanzar el 30% en breve. La ocupación de terreno es moderada, 2 hectáreas por megavatio. Se espera reducir su precio en los próximos 5 a 10 años para alcanzar los 10 céntimos de euro por kilovatio hora en el sur de Europa. Estos precios serán aún inferiores en lugares de mayor radiación, llegándose a situar por debajo de los costes de otras tecnologías no renovables. Final de la segunda parte.